Welcome to the synthesis series of instructionals associated with the Architectural Orthographic Drawing Stream, the Architectural Communications course at UQ. In these next instructionals, we will take the raw survey data collected during the T2 Technical Skills Workshop and combine it to create a contour plan. To start the process, it will be necessary to collect a full set of survey data from the various survey lines that groups measured during the T2 workshop exercise. Try and collate a full set of survey data before moving to the next steps. Once we have a full set of survey data, transpose the full data set on top of the base plan of the survey area. Make sure to be as accurate as possible in terms of the plan positioning. Before moving to the next phase, check to see if there are any obvious anomalies with the survey measurements. Cross-check these anomalies with the readings of the same survey line from another group. When we were on site, it was obvious that there were no pronounced ridges or valleys, so the slope should be reasonably smooth and consistent. It's best to start the first contour line somewhere in the middle range of the spot readings. In this instance, I am trying to identify the contour line that corresponds with the relative height of 11 metres. I track through the survey lines and find the regions where an 11 metre height reading would logically occur. I then draw a line connecting the spot levels along each of the survey lines. Next, I look at the spot levels at each end of the connecting lines I have just drawn, and by approximating the proportion of the line against the actual levels at either end, I can determine the location where the height 11 metres would be. Though we could achieve this with greater precision using proportional mathematics, in this instance proportionally correct solutions by eye will be adequate. Once the 11 metre height points have been established, I would then connect the points with a line. The final step is to then remove the connecting lines that help to construct the contour and to redraw a more natural flowing line between the points. If we know that the slope was a gentle and flowing undulating slope, then we should draw the contour line as a more naturalistic line, making sure that it still intersects the points we calculated in the previous step. Once we have successfully established the first contour line, we simply repeat the process for the rest of the survey area. Here we have represented each contour with a different colour to avoid confusion. Remember that we are generating the contour lines for the whole number only at this stage. The final step would be to optimise the lines so that they flow more organically. Once the primary contours have been generated, we will go back and interpolate between the lines to generate the half contour lines. This saves us a bit of effort and needless overcalculation than constructing the half contour lines from first principles. Given that the terrain we were measuring was a simple rolling terrain, we can safely assume that a line of best fit midway between the contours we have just generated would be adequate for this contour plan. The only thing to keep in mind are places where the slope may change. In this instance, the slope tends to flatten out a bit towards the bottom of the stair, so we should be careful to ensure that we keep an eye on the spot levels and pick up where this transition between slopes occurs. At the end of the process, we can retrace and clean up the drawing to create our final contour plan based on our simple survey. The whole or primary survey lines are shown with an unbroken line and the secondary survey lines are shown with a dashed line. There is no convention governing this so long as there is a simple and consistent logic applied in terms of line weight and style and that the line weight and style you use does not overwhelm the overall plan. When locating our building on the site, we need to work between the contour plan and section to ensure that changes to the terrain as a result of our designs are accurately represented on our contour plans. Devising these changes exclusively in plan is difficult, however working between plan and section makes the task much easier and more accurate. In this instance, we will start by producing a section through our contour plan that we have just drawn. As per the workshop deliverables, we will need to position a new pond in the slope 
that has a surface area of approximately 90 metres squared. Though we will not commit to the pond yet in our drawings, we will roughly locate the pond so that we can target where we draw our section more effectively. Once we have roughed in the pond, we can then generate a section slice that runs more or less perpendicular to the prevailing contour line direction. Generating the section works along the same principle as generating any section from a plan. We would set up our plan so that the section line was parallel to the bottom of our drawing board. We would start the section by drawing a series of parallel lines spaced in the same values as the contour lines. So in this case we have contour lines representing every half metre change in height. Therefore the section would start with a series of parallel lines spaced at 500 millimetres apart to scale. We then project the intersection of the section line with the contour lines on the plan down to these starting horizontal lines of the section. These will intersect the corresponding horizontal heights in section. By connecting the intersection of projecting lines and the horizontal heights in section, we can reveal a slope section or profile. We will leave it there for now. Hopefully we'll have a general idea how to generate a contour plan and section from a simple survey. In following instructionals, we will continue working with the section to show how we can represent changes in the contour plan as a result of our design interventions into the terrain. Thanks for listening.